everyone, it's Carrie Ann and I am back today with something rather exciting. Well, exciting for me anyway. This is the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolour Sheets. So this is the 238 different colours of the Daniel Smith watercolour range. Now, obviously, I couldn't afford to go all in and buy every single colour a tube of, uh, because I'm not absolutely rich, which artist is. <laughs> um, so what I've done is I bought the cards, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and test them all, and then I'm going to decide which ones I think I'm going to use most often, and then I'm going to purchase those to start my collection. Now, you will possibly see some of my other videos where I use um, SAA Watercolours, Cotman, Windsor Newton Professional, um, I use tubes and then I pop them into my pan set, so if I grab that one as well. So this is the sort of, this is what I use for travelling, so I keep them in um, here, so I use mostly full pans, um, I do have some half pans but that's what I mostly use for travelling, and then I just have a generic box. Um, it was actually the artist Alison Board that introduced me to, to working in this way because previously I used to work with um, like the, the, the pan sets by Daily Rowney and Windsor Newton that you can get. Um, but tubes actually for me, now I've learned how to treat them, how to work with them, I'm much happier with tubes which is what led me on to the Daniel Smith range. So I have a tiny amount of experience of working with Daniel Smith watercolours um, so I was given this one quite a while ago and I had a few a really small test sheet um, and I really enjoyed them and I worked with them when I went to a course with Alison Board and um, I was really impressed so which is why I bought these in the hope that I will find my favourite colours so this is exactly how it came I have literally just opened it up to show you so I've even got the the interference colours here um, I've got every single colour that I'm aware of are in the collection, so 238. It gives you all of the information um, about the paints as well as the opportunity then to, to test them. Um, so what I'm first of all going to do is something that I have seen um, on another YouTube video where you literally just wet the paint and move it around. Um, so first of all I'm just going to go around and do that. So I have just got a pot of water, I'm just going to clean it between each one and I'm just going to rub over the top just to then give myself um, the, the actual colour behind it as well. But the other thing I'm going to do is what I do with all of my paints, sorry, excuse the rattling, I'm actually going to use my watercolour tags. Now these are available on devonartsupplies.co.uk. Um, I'm going to use the watercolour tags to actually colour on the colour and then write all the details below and then I keep those on a little hook um, next to me so that I can go back. So as I'm going over it, I'm also going to then bring the colour to the watercolour tag and I'm just going to drag it along so that I've got that intense colour um, and then I've also got the um, paler shade as I pull it along with the water so you can see then the tonal effect that I'm going to be able to achieve so I've just got to remember to put them in order of where I'm going so I have to do this first one now the interesting thing I have noticed already is um, there's different amounts of each colour so I'm going to have to be really, really careful um, not to waste too much on this test process um, because some there's plenty and some there's not so much. So I'm going to pull that one along and then I'm going to just put them off screen but I'm just putting them to the side so that I can um, go through and decide which colours to use. Apologies there, I just had a customer come into the shop, so that may well happen during the video. I will just pause it and then continue as I go along. Um, so all I have done is put the permanent orange onto this one here. Um, now what I'm noticing is a really lovely smooth effect with these ones. And as I say, this is watercolour card, so it's reacting how it will on most of the watercolour card that I use. I do tend to use, the, the watercolour card I've got underneath here is the SAA Practice watercolour paper. Um, in the knot. I do use rough quite a lot as well um, and I also use Archer's, Sanford, lots of different um, types of watercolour papers so I like to experiment. Now this colour I am loving, cadmium red, that's probably because I use it quite a lot in my work. Really really lovely strong depth of colour there and you can get a really good tonal range there as well. So I'm just making sure that I am putting these in the right order. But what I might start doing is actually just writing down. 
I'm not going to write all of the information that I'm actually going to write down on it. So I will put all of the information on these tags. But I think to start with, I'm just going to write the name. So then what I won't do is get them muddled up. Now I really would recommend this um, project for people who are getting into watercolours because having these tags to hand when you are working on a project is so so handy because when you are looking for a colour it's not so easy to always identify the colour when they're in your um, set um, because they don't look the same, they look very different um, when they are coming out of the tube to how they work when they are working with water. Sorry, I got totally mesmerised by the colour then. <laughs> really beautiful, lovely colour. I'm just pulling that one along. And can you see here when I get with the dry brush, the, te the texture that I can get? So I do work quite a lot um, on creating different textures and effects and things. And I love the dry brush effect here, where it's with the rough paper, you can get it so that it just brushes the surface and not quite going through really love that um, that's totally separate to the fact of the color <laughs> which the colors are wonderful so far as well um, so let's have a look at this one here I'm not even going to try and pronounce any of these because I'm awful at pronouncing um, names um, and also you'll probably tell that my voice at the moment is really poor. I've had a chest infection for the past couple of weeks and I've only actually got my voice back this past day. Um, so I'm trying to look after it, but it is still a little bit croaky. Love this one, lovely, lovely color. Really love the depth of this one. I can imagine this would make some beautiful floors. Can you see that I was saying about the dry brush again? So as the brush gets dry, I get this gorgeous texture effect. So do play around with your watercolours. I know you'll have a lot of the artists, a lot of the tutors that say never let your brush go dry, um, but I absolutely love the texture you can get. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. So don't forget, I am going to put all of the details on for each one. Um, I'm not going to um, put them on right now, but I will later. And I will also do some testing with them as well, see how they blend, see how they mix together. Um, but you get the idea of what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to squiggle over the top and then I'm also going to put them on here so that I can see what sort of effect I'm going to get when I start to work with them. Now one thing I am noticing with these is that the um, the pigment is really, really, really strong. Um, let's just go over this one a second. So the colors are so, you don't need very much to get such a gorgeous vibrancy. Really beautiful. Now lots and lots of my favorite artists and tutors um, are regularly um, promoting these Daniel Smith watercolors. So you will have heard of them, I'm sure. Um, if you're in any creative um, circles, you will have heard of these. I'm sure you will. And you've probably seen lots of amazing things. So I'm very late to the party, I will admit. Um, but it's probably because, for me, the price of them, um, even though I work professionally um, a as an artist now and I, and I teach um, mainly sort of children and beginners, even though as an artist I want to work with top quality products, the price of these was a little bit out of my, my range, which I'm sure many of you will be thinking a similar thing. And so I've been using SAA watercolors and I've been using sort of all the core brands, Winsor & Newton, De La Rowney. So it is fair that they are of the higher end, but what I am noticing already is the pigment is just so beautiful and you're not going to be using as much um, to, to get these effects, but also, you're going to be open to a world of, of lots of new colours. Um, so yes, the prices are going to be something, you know, more of a considered purchase. Something to really think about whether or not you are really in need of these sorts of um, quality of paints or whether you're just starting out if you're just sort of testing the water at the moment with your artwork. Um, but if you want to test it with 
some really quality, strong colours, then I would probably say um, in just the short time I've been experimenting with them, both here and, and at workshops, that yes, these are a fantastic range to go for. But if you're totally, totally new and, and you want something that's good but not the sort of price of these Daniel Smith ones, I would say go for either the Cotman, Windsor Newton Cotman range, um, or go for the SAA if you're an SAA member. Um, do remember that if you are thinking of joining the SAA, um, that you can have a look at my blog. I do a lot of blogging about the SAA, but also um, if you join because you've watched one of my videos, remember to quote JL10490, um, and that just helps me to be recognised as someone that is um, an ambassador and an associate for the SAA. Um, so it's really helpful, so just remember to quote that reference number if you do join, um, then that would be really helpful. Um, it's It's one of those things where I considered joining and I did join just as a, a a low you know the lowest membership they did right at the beginning and I wasn't really sure what it was that they would help me with I thought is it just the sale of products I don't really need that because obviously I own an art shop so why would I need that um, but what I did notice is they had access to products that I didn't already have access to but also it's the sort of the support you get from the team and you also have that opportunity to promote yourself on their website and talk on the gallery to, to other artists. There's also workshops they do. Um, I haven't been able to go to any of the workshops because they are up north and I'm far down in the south as far away as you can get. But what I have been able to since joining is watch them both live and um, catch up as well on their website as a member I can do that so it's really useful um, tool to be able to go on there and watch those. Um, some of my favourite artists um, obviously Alison Seaboard I mention quite regularly because total inspiration to me but also Jane Betteridge I think her surname is and Ali, I forget, Ali Hargreaves I think that her surname is um, so those two are um, two of the other artists that I absolutely love but there's lots of other artists on there that I love to, to watch the videos of um, because there is so much variety and that's the thing, art is so subjective and everyone's going to love something different um, one of the artists may not be your thing but there will be an artist for everyone on there because there's so much variety so it's definitely worth considering um, if you're getting into your art joining the SAA this is quite actually relaxing. I don't have to rush, I can just take my time and just literally go through smudging the colour over the top and then picking up some of the paint and smudging it onto my card. It's a great way to get to know the colours and what they'll do for you. Beautiful. If you can hear some slight music in the background, I do have the rights for that music. It's actually a local composer and artist called John Buckley. Um, he actually dropped me in his own CD, um, so I have full rights to be able to listen to this music whilst I am at work and in the background of my videos as well. Um, if you want his CDs, they are available. I'll pop the link in the um, in the comments underneath so that you can go and have a look at the CD that it is I'm listening to. It's quite nice and relaxing, perfect for anyone who wants something just soft in the background. He does do some with more sort of an upbeat, but um, but this is one of the ones that is nice and soft. Love that dry brush texture on the the end there. Oh, the brush that I'm using is one of the SAA Imitation Sable brushes. So this is number six round. Again, love these brushes, really beautiful. But I also love the um, Graduate Range from Daily Rowney. So I use those quite a lot. Um, I've, I'm a bit of a brushaholic. I do have a lot of brushes. A lot of them I sort of only have for collection purposes, I guess you would say. Um, I collect them and then just sort of look at them because they look pretty and very rarely actually use them. The core three that I use are the six, the four and the ten round. Um, but 
but then I do a lot of sort of abstract watercolours, a lot of floral watercolours, that sort of thing. So I will get back into videoing a lot more videos soon. I know a lot of you have been saying, you know, why haven't you been doing all your videos? I, do, I don't do so much um, craft, obviously, anymore. I'm very much focused on my art now. Um, but I do still have, you know, I do still design products for companies and I do still work for um, the Imagine Design Create brand and things like that. But my passion is obviously the art side of things. Beautiful. Now this Rose Madder, interestingly, it might be because they've only given me a really small amount, but it doesn't seem quite what I imagined it to be, and I use Rose Madder quite a lot. So I am quite surprised that I'm not in love with this one as much as I thought I would be. Now it is important when you write out all of the information for these to look at the um, the information for, um, I don't know if you can see it at the bottom here, but the, the granulation, yes or no, transparency, transparent, semi-transparent or opaque, um, but also the light fastness is really, really key as well. So do put that information on here when you go back and, and add all that information because you are going to want that information when you're working on um, projects, especially if you're going to work on things that are going to be, you know, hung um, out on display, you are going to want to know the light fastness especially um, and also you're going to want to know transparency. Now this one here is a semi-transparent but it is absolutely, I mean the depth that I've got on this one is just beautiful. This may possibly be my new favourite colour. Oh, of course, Bordeaux. <laughs> I mean, that would make a lot of sense. There we go. So I'm going to turn that one over because I managed to paint the end of it. What were you think? So what you may not see off screen is I actually have a piece of tissue and that's something that I always have um, to the side of me just to dab off any excess. Um, let's have a look at this one. Hannes yellow. Hansy yellow. It's a little guy with this one. So you're probably thinking there's only very slight differences um, in some of these yellows. Now anyone who is you know, a professional artist that works every day with these colours is going to, to want the range because they're going to find different reasons to, to use each yellow and each yellow is going to blend differently with the other colours, it's going to create different mixes, it's also going to um, work differently in your painting. So yes, if you are working every day in watercolour and you really want the best of the best, then you're going to want every single one. But if you are just starting out, then you're going to just want to choose the ones that work better for you. Apologies, that was another customer that's just popped in there. Um, I am in the shop at the moment in 30 Queen Street in Seaton. Um, I'm in Devon Art Supplies. It's quite early in the morning. I opened up early um, to be able to, to get this started. But even when I open up early, people like to pop in, just get those essentials that they've been waiting for the door to open <laughs> so they can come and get them. Wow, really beautiful. See, I can imagine that being really useful to for tomatoes for some reason. Some of the tomatoes in my garden look exactly this colour at the moment. The music has stopped doing it. I'll see if I can put that back on in a minute. Now we are not even halfway through the first page here yet. So you may well have had enough of watching me sort out through the colours. But you get the idea of what it is that I'm going to do through the whole 
set. And I know I like watching lots of YouTube videos of people going through with all the paints. So some of you may want me to go through the whole lot. And we'll see how long my phone lasts out because I am just swimming this on the phone on the tripod at the moment. Now this one's interesting. This is a, a very transparent opera pink. And I have opera pink actually in the Windsor Newton Professional um, watercolour range. I have to say, it's very similar. Obviously it would be with the colour, but it is, both I would say, both of a very good consistency and pigment, and both blend really nicely as well. Now what I am noticing is that the weather at the moment, it is a rainy day outside, but it is still quite warm, um, being that it's July, and the watercolours are drying quite quickly. Um, so that's a good thing for what I'm doing obviously today because I don't want it to dry too slowly when I'm piling up all of these. Just going to turn the music back on. There we go. Just so I've got something on in the background there. And if you're still with me, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're finding this process interesting, seeing all the colours come to life on the page. Now I will change over my water in a minute as well. I have got one on standby. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure. Yes, this is. Um, it's been printed. It's been printed. So the the actual the wording has been printed on watercolor card when you get these. So um, when you then when they dot on the paint. It is designed so that you can do what I'm doing now and know that it's already on watercolour paper so it's good enough to move around now. I obviously forgot to write the name on that one, I'll have to do that in a second. Getting impatient wanting to try other colours. Now you probably will notice that my writing isn't the neatest when I'm rushing like this. It can be um, quite messy sometimes. It's a really pretty one, I like this one. Now I'm just going to check, I think I've got a little bit left on my phone, the battery, so I'll keep going for a tiny bit longer. Oh, don't want to do that. Potter's pink. Doesn't want to loosen up this one. 